Every single thing I see you in, you look totally different. It's extraordinary. But with Nancy, absolutely no vanity whatsoever. <laughs> you, must have, you must have just come in and got made under. <laughs> you must Yeah, have. no, no, no. That is a bit like my makeup. When we go in, when I come out, my makeup artist is like, yeah, you look worse. That's great. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed yeah. to be. She just wants to belong, doesn't she? She just wants love, I guess. She, this yeah, woman. she does. And, you know, so many of, so many male roles in film were expected almost to fall in love with them as mm. flawed individuals. Yes, yes. And we're encouraged to. It's, it's, yep. it's kind of a romantic mm. ideal. Mm. And, um, and, and women Nancy certainly has her flaws. Oh, she does. Yeah. She does. What I thought was so interesting about this was the fact that when the titles rolled, yeah. It was all women, more or less, I mean, mostly. And yeah. that you don't get that. You don't get... Was that a different experience being on set where... I mean, because I know you co-produced the movie as well, where so many people in charge were women? It was such a different experience. And I think the people, all of us who made it, who, who all heads of department were female, yeah. other than one. Um, mm -hmm. Our score was written by, by a man, a wonderful composer. Um, it was it was a conscious decision, you know. We, yeah. we wanted to really. I, I when I started my company, it's a very small company called Mother Sucker. When I started that, I really wanted to Mother make Sucker, all of it. Mother Sucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's laughter. I know. It's quite I know. nice. <laughs> I was actually surprised that some sort of funny website hadn't already taken it, mm. you know. So um, I was I was kind of pleased to get the name. But I sucked from my mother in the best way, so that's why I called it Mother Sucker. Sure. But when I started the company, I was really interested to see how it would affect what was happening on screen who was behind yeah. the camera, you know, and really s telling a female story through a female lens. And we, and we did. And our DP, Zoe, who, uh, she went on to do The Handmaid's Tale from her work on Nancy. So. And, of course, Aunt, Aunt and Lydia Aunt from Handmaid's yeah. Tale. She's, and there. she's there too. Yeah. All yeah. these connections, which, yeah. is which is really good. You've worked with female directors before, of course. You've worked with Madonna. Yeah. Now, that's diff it's almost different because Madonna is Madonna. Yes. And that's that's a different one. When you did when you did W, fascinating story, fascinating story of Wallace Simpson. But I guess Madonna gets judged in a different way because she's Madonna. It's hard, isn't it? And people people sort of come that the expectations are maybe higher. I don't know. People are maybe more judgmental, maybe. Yeah, I, th I think I think it's really difficult uh, just in any profession to sort of when you're good at more than one thing. Yeah, so how dare you? You're supposed to be good at that. Yeah. You're supposed to be a singer. You've like the be difference doing that. between American and, and yeah. English education, you know, where in America they go, You're so special. <laughs> and in the UK they're like, What's so special about you? That's you know? <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm grateful for. Me too. I'm Me grateful too. because I keep thinking keeps your head on your shoulders. But, absolutely. But yes, it's there's almost like a judgment before before you've even presented what you want to present to the world. And and I think it's great that people move in and out of different genres yeah. and different and have different platforms for their work. You know? No, very much so, very, very much so. Didn't you love the fact that Noel Fitzpatrick, who's just been on, wants, to, wants Meryl Streep to play him? I, yeah. yeah. But, but actually, I think you should do it because... That you... was a very humble choice on his part. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you know, should... <laughs> Meryl Streep, yeah, that'd be fair. But I yeah. love that, I love yeah. the fact that it's... I mean, why not? I think I would, I would quite like uh, maybe Mother Teresa to play me. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's no, I, I, I felt a little bit... I was like, God, I'm going on after Super Vet. What do I do in my life? It started like I'm saving animals' limbs, is it? No, but you're, but you're still... You're, still, you're entertaining <laughs> us. You're entertaining us. I love the fact that books and Bake Off are your... Like, when you're not working. Yeah. When you just want to chill. Yeah. Because I'm like, you, anytime we move house, is, there's a second van for the books. I've just got far too yeah. many. I can't let go of them. Even rubbish ones. Yeah. I've got, and they're all dog-eared, but I've got to hang on to them. I was also sort of... Um, we never threw any books away at home because no, they were so, um, you know, precious yeah. things. Yeah. No, we never threw anything away. So, yeah, I come with, like, a wheel of... I have no yeah. underwear and loads of books. Look, look, Every time I travel, I ju uh, yeah. Which is good. I it's think good. That's, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. And Bake Off's, like... It's like my cosy place, you know. Totally. Totally. Makes me feel safe What's wherever I am in the world. If I just turn it you on. just think it's, I know. it's fantastic. And then all of them, all the presenters and all the, the contestants are so lovely. And you, but what I was saying earlier on about you, this whole chameleon thing, yeah. you just never, you, but that must be amazing because you, nobody, nobody puts you in a little box. Nobody says, oh, you're, you're the wife or you're the mother or you're the sex object or you're this. You're just you yeah. and you can do anything. Yeah, and I, I've, I've, I think I've been very conscious of that. Even when I was at... Well, when I was out, I went to RADA, the drama yeah. school, and, and when I was there, I felt so much like, the, the, you know, I was kept on being cast as the sort of young, prissy thing. Mm. And I, I felt so frustrated and so uh, unseen. I mean, get my tiny violin out. It was so <laughs> terrible. But, but, but I did feel like there was so much more 
that I wanted to explore yeah. and I just I, I, it just really wasn't given the opportunity as much. So when I came out, my final years of RADA were great because I, uh, they really allowed me to do that. You know, I played 87-year-old women and 70-year-old boys and all sorts of things, you know, because you can do that at drama school. And then, and then when I came out, I, yeah, I, d I didn't really want to be uh, ever put in, in one very narrow box. Nobody can do that with you. They can do well, that. Especially with you. as a woman, I think we, yeah. we see, you know, because women aren't penned by women often, mm. uh, the character can become very narrow. Yeah. And that's nobody's fault. People write what they know. But it's also getting better. I'm optimistic, or you know. It is getting better. It is getting better. And even to, you know, to be able to employ an 80% female cast and a 60% mm. POC cast without, I mean, there are a few, there, I've had a few hurdles, you know, people say, is that, isn't that discriminatory? And it is mm. discriminatory. I mean, we do 66% of the world's work as women and we earn 10% of the world's pay or somewhere around that. I think UNICEF yeah. did that statistic a while back. And so until, that's, until we're on a little more equal footing, then we can have the conversation about whether that's discrimination. I mean, I think we need to just start girls off grassroots, you know, knowing that when they mm. learn to wire a plug in physics, that that can then they can lead on to be an electrician on a, on a, on a, on a floor of a soundstage. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat>